exile and labor. But they're not your children. I know Bill Cosby said, I brought you in this world and I'll take you out. But I want you to know that Bill Cosby's children are not Bill Cosby's children. They are God's children. Amen. And we, they are a gift from God. The Bible declared children are a gift from the Lord. They are a reward from Him. How happy is the man whose quiver is full of them. They are God's children. And God is going to hold us accountable how we treat our children, how we talk to them. I'm telling you, church folks, they got some ways now. Bye bye, I'll knock you through them pews. God is hearing. I understand, I hear what you, I understand this, what, what you're trying to say. But God's going to hold us accountable. The Bible said it'd be better for a millstone to be tied around your neck than for you to offend one of these little children. Children are special to God. And from Jesus' ministry, he taught that children are special. Amen. One time, Jesus was catering to and, and ministering to the grown folks, the old grown folks. And then, then some children came about. And the disciples started saying, go away. Jesus don't have time for you. You're not important, Ogle Tree. You're not important, Robinson. You're just a little child. Go away, little three-year-old boy. You're not important. <laughs> But Jesus said, oh, whoa, 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 wait a minute. Jesus stopped everything he was doing. So I know that you're a preacher and, 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 and the Lord is with you. You've been fasting and praying. But I got a VIP in the house. You just wait right here. I know you're sick and I know you need the Lord, but you just wait right here. Jesus put everything on hold. And he stopped and said, allow these children to come to me. Because they're that important. On another occasion. Jesus took a small child, set him down in the midst of these, and said, who should be the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And at least you come as one of these little ones. You will no wise make it in. Jesus constantly made a reference to children. Then we have a whole story about how God took, took a little boy who had lunch and made him a and made him famous Amen. in the Bible. You all read about the little boy and his lunch. Send the signal that children are and must be important in our lives. Amen. Too many times I hear parents say, I'm going to make time for my children. No, we should not have to make time. Make time infers that I'm going to have to squeeze them in. Amen. You, shouldn't have to, you might have to make time for your hobbies. You might have to make time to, to fix them. You might have to make time to go shopping. But you take time for your children. You cancel things out of your day's schedule just for your children. You tell somebody, no, I cannot do that because I, this is my child's time. We as parents, and we that, that say that we love children, we have to take time with them. A famous psychologist named Mahler once said that parents spend less than 15 minutes a day talking with their children. 15 minutes a day. And if we would stop and think just for a minute, how much time did I spend with my child today? I mean talking with them. I ain't talking about, boy, you're not took out the trash yet? When you finish your homework yet, go clean your room. We spend a lot of time barking out orders. And, and, and yelling and screaming at them and telling them what to do. But how was your day? Tell me what's going on in your life. Amen. Who are you talking to now, girl? I over, uh, I was going, what that little boy you heard talking on the phone? Tell me about him. That's what I mean by spending time with them. Figuring out what's going on in their world. Making them a part of their life. Making them feel special. Making them feel like they're important. Amen. And if we don't make time for them, we don't take time out of our lives for them, then they're going to feel that they are an afterthought. Mm -hmm. When I got nothing else to do, and, 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 and the thing is that oftentimes when we were growing up, like right now, how old is that little boy? Two. Two. Right now, that two-year-old, what? When that two-year-old go to daycare and he brings back that little picture, what do y'all do with that little picture? Put it on the refrigerator, take it at work, and put it in the cubicle, cubicle. You will say, oh, what a beautiful picture. How lovely. Come here, man. Get it, mama. Give you a hug. And then and that little boy be grinning from ear to ear. He feels so good because mama 
took time out of mama, patted him on the back. Mama said that he loved him. Mama said all these things. Well, let me let you know that two-year-old boy. Stand up. You, big one. No, you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, God. That two-year-old boy is still inside joint. That two-year-old boy still lived within Gagliano. That was that, yes, I'm saying it right? That two-year-old boy is still in that. Hi, this is Reverend Dr. Roger Latson. I hope that you just enjoyed, that you enjoyed the services that you just heard, that you received something from the Preach Word of God. We're here at Conakin the first, second, and third Sundays, and we return on Thursday for one hour of Bible study between the hours of 7 and 8 p.m. We are inviting you to join with us in one of these services, and God's Word will bless your soul. Come again, listen again, and God will do it again. Again, this is Reverend Dr. Roger Lobson, pastor of Conic and Emmanuel Baptist Church.